Hello, viewers. Welcome to the show. This is a special edition of Prime Media with me, Mangusto Safa. There is a conflict in Ethiopia in the northern part of the country that is feared that it, would, it, it, it will cause a regional destabilization in the Horn of Africa. I have a guest from Nairobi, Kenya, a Kenyan politician and the former deputy speaker of the National Parliament of Kenya, Mr. Farah Malim. I will be talking to him about the regional implication of this conflict. And stay with us. I have a special guest today from East Africa, Kenya, a Kenyan politician. Uh, he, is, uh, he used to be a Kenyan a deputy speaker for the national parliament and a twice member of the parliament, uh, Mr. Uh, Farah Mali. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, it's good to have you, sir. Uh, so we are going to start by me asking you some of the questions about uh, what's going on in Ethiopia. Uh, as a person who is uh, closely following what is happening in Ethiopia, especially the northern parts of Ethiopia, the Tigray armed conflict, how do you see the conflict, sir? Well, the conflict, in my opinion, is an internal matter very much. It, it's a question of uh, uh, federalism taken a little bit too far, because federalism basically means uh, a devolution, uh, economic devolution, by and large. Uh, the center ordinarily is supposed to be in charge of many things. Uh, that includes all the national policies, policies, the military, the foreign affairs, the, all those things are supposed to be done by, this, by the center. And that goes to all democracies that we know of. You know, this is not a confederation. This is not a, a union like the, EU, the, 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 the European Union. Or, or any other bloc. This is a country. It's a one country. And uh, for the TPLF uh, to uh, behave like these uh, two centers of power in Ethiopia itself uh, was, in my opinion, a travesty of the, 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 of, of, of the, the manner in which they have tried to interpret uh, uh, devolution or to interpret federalism. So I, I'm, I think the, the, uh, Abiy and his government have been very patient for a very long time. Ordinarily, when these kind of things happen, uh, the center is supposed to come very hard because center is supposed to have monopoly of foreign relations, monopoly of the, 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 the what do you call the means of firepower, which is the military and all the rest. You can have uh, a state police uh, uh, merely for keeping law and order ordinarily in that place. That's why you call them Lee police in your country. But for uh, uh, um, 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 uh, a state to attack its own military, the military that is supposed to maintain the territorial integrity of the country itself, and to kill its own officers, I think that was the height of lawlessness. And uh, it's understandable because the TPLF has held Ethiopia as some kind of hostage for a very long time well over almost three decades. So there was too much impunity. I mean, it became part of their life and uh, they got so used to it. You see, they say power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So they, 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 because of the manner in which they practice the power and monopolize the power and, 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 and monopolize the economic might of that country itself and became a law unto themselves for almost three decades, I think they, they decided well, if we're going to miss this opportunity of holding the entire country as some kind of a chattel, then we might as well uh, uh, secede. So that can only be dealt with, and the response has got to be swift, it has to be strong, it has to be powerful, and it cannot be questioned. The only thing the international community and the country itself can do is to support the center in this case. Good, sir. There are many analysts who uh, call for uh, negotiated settlement to this uh, uh, conflict. So you are suggesting that this operation should end so very soon. Uh, and there are also fears that this conflict might drag in some states, some of the East African states, so that it would, it might also destabilize the region. What is your view on that? No, the, it is the height of dishonesty. It's the height of 
of, of, of both intellectual as well as operational and, and statecraft dishonesty for somebody to suggest that uh, a state within a bigger nation itself can decide to act unilaterally and go and kill its own officers and armed forces and then you say let there be a negotiation between the two. They, this, was, this is not a border between two sovereign states where one of them moved into the other. They, that way you can say yes, let's have a ceasefire, let's have the two countries, you know, uh, come back into their own senses and, 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 and see what can be done in terms of resolving the issue. This is an internal matter. The American Civil War, the American Civil War, if you remember the history of that, more than anything else was because the states decided not to listen to the center. And that's why Abraham Lincoln uh, uh, decided, whether you can call it an American Civil War, but that's why Abraham Lincoln decided to commit the, the, the central government, United States of America, and its military and all those forces to try and bring those states into the fold properly. In Africa, I think that's probably not such a powerful parallel because America was in that time going through the formation. Ethiopia has been a state now for a very long time. Uh, the other one which can be compared to that is the one of Biafra, when Biafra tried to secede from Nigeria. And the whole world was there to say, no, it can't work. And, and, and basically what happened was what happened. I mean, the, the, the central government of Nigeria uh, came very hard on the, on the Biafran. Uh, of course, there's going to be a hell of a lot of lots and lots of uh, sufferings and loss of life and a lot of things happen, but it had to be brought back to the fold. The same goes, because if you now allow this to happen with Tigray, what is going to happen to the other states in, 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 in Ethiopia or the provinces? Or anybody to tell you right now, we decided, we, de we decided to secede from Kenya ourselves in 1963. And we wanted to join with Somalia. And I'm talking about the province which I come from, which was called the Northern Frontier Districts, where the Kushitic, Hamitic, what do you call the, the, the Oromos and the Somalis live in. The, our government did not go out there to seek a settlement of that issue, no. The military came in hard, the gov all the governments, and that was a newly independent country. We were brought back to the fold. The same happened on a number of occasions in other places. So if Ethiopia being fragile as it is, Ethiopia is basically a, a state that is trying to find its way into a nationhood, proper nationhood, uh, with, 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 a, with appreciation of the diversity that it has. But the diversity is not supposed to weaken the center. The diversity is supposed to take, make the best out of uh, devolve the economic, what you call freedom, and at the same time strengthen the center. So I, I, I don't think there will be a, a civil war that cannot be called a civil war. I don't think uh, this uh, con uh, conflict is going to extend or expand to the neighboring countries. It's the one that was going to cost you go anywhere in now. We have, we, have, we have been at war with one another for the last 20 odd years. Uh, Ethiopia went to war with Eritrea. Ethiopia went to uh, invade Somalia and occupy Somalia. Ethiopia went and did awful things in Sudan. They did awful things in South Sudan. They, and that is, that is because the TPLF was in power at that time. And the TPLF converted it itself to some kind of a higher machinery, powerful strength, which was supposed to be used by, I don't know which, but some powerful Western countries to protect its own interests. And, and they used the gambled diplomacy everywhere. You can't allow that. For the first time, the region is going to see peace. It's going to see uh, economic integration. We are not going to have one cycle of violence after the other because everybody used to prepare themselves for the next cycle of violence. And Ethiopia was going to disintegrate as a state, as a state in, in, in the form and shape we have known it for the last almost 200 years, or maybe even much more. So I, I think uh, what is happening right now is very good. It is a lesson to the rest of the countries in the region it is a wake-up call to, to, to all the countries in the region, and if they don't support Ethiopia this time in, 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 in establishing the way they're establishing, who knows? Next time there are going to be problems in Kenya. Next time there are going to be problems in Sudan itself, where the East would want to secede, or there's going to be Uganda problems where the North would want to secede. So it, it's important. There's going to be a problem in, in Djibouti where you can have an ethnic, or whatever it is. So basically the point we are saying is that let us protect the states the way they are. Let the center be respected. Let them also make an informed, brilliant, 
acceptable uh, uh, utilization of the federalism that's there. And I don't think TPLF did that. TPLF was careless and crooked and, 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 and terrible. And, and, and basically, this is now what is happening to them right now. Everybody will tell you they deserve it. Thank you, sir. But in one of your tweets, you tweeted that this war is not between Abiy Ahmed and the TPLF. It's neither between Amhara and the Tigray people. It is between TPLF and the Horn of Africa. And you further went that to say that TPLF has taken, have taken the Djibouti and the Kenyan foreign policy hostage. And the IGAD is TPLF too. Can you elaborate on that, sir? What do you mean? What did you... Well, well... Well, I'll give you just one example. How many years was Meles the, the chairman of uh, IGAD? Ordinarily, the chairmanship of IGAD should be changing every one year. <laughs> what happened? We, call, we talked to our country, the, our country became hostage. If you remember very well, uh, my own foreign minister here, who's a very good friend of mine, and, 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 and the government, one time went out there to the UN to claim that Eritrea is, is supporting Al Shabaab in Baidawa, with the most preposterous, outrageous, unfounded false accusations. Uh, when it came to Somalia, uh, Ethiopia went into Somalia without, without any, 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 any resolution, any, any resolution as such. When Eritrea take, tried to come back into the fold, uh, Ethiopia used the most crooked, crooked, primitive way of telling the Egan secretary, executive secretary that you cannot have them there. So much so that the representative of Eritrea into Egan was thrown out of the, the, the conference. So, so basically, we had, we had a mafia running that place, and, and it took charge of, let me tell you, Djibouti's foreign policy, or rather a policy toward the TPLF, is common knowledge. Everybody knows that. And, and, and well, oh, Margele might have run his country in the manner in which he ran it, but the reality of the matter is that uh, the, the Zarawi was a supremo. He was literally the man who ran the whole region. In our case, also, we felt the same. That's why right now we are confused. We are in a state of confusion in the Minister of Foreign Affairs. We have changed the minister, former minister. But we still don't know what, where we are going and where we are coming from. Because we allowed, we allowed an age-old relationship between Haile Selassie and and, 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 and Jomo Kenyatta, when Kenya got independence, and of course, Ethiopia came back together through that mutual defense pact, which was designed to, to protect one another against certain ethnic communities, both in Ethiopia and in Somalia, in Kenya and in Somalia. So, but you see, the point of the matter is that times have changed. Times have now changed. You cannot hold Ethiopia in the manner it was before. Ethiopia had a history in which they were the lesser humans, and the more, you know, nobility, the more what you call uh, uh, privileges, the more like, and, and, and when, what, t what, what the TPL had exercised well, it was clearly to say that, we are there. <laughs> you know, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than the others, so the TPLF was much more equal than all the rest of Ethiopia. And our Kenya government accepted that in principle, and then basically we became hostage for them. And let, let me tell you one thing, there was never an IGAD. IGAD, in its previous constitution, before our good brother Orkene came in there now, was nothing but a small department in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of, of Ethiopia, which was run by Mr. Sium and, and all the facts you remember, including Gabriel and God knows who, and, and sometimes even military generals who are in Somalia or who are in, in the eastern, in the, in the, in, in, in the Somali region of, of Ethiopia. So there was nothing called IGAD in the sense of the founders or the initiators of that noble idea in the first place. IGAD was completely taken over by Ethiopia. And, and Ethiopia, Djibouti could not do anything. Uh, well, I can understand. It depends on, it, on Ethiopia for a lot of its business, undoubtedly, yes. But, but, but there again, when it came to foreign policy towards Somalia, foreign policy towards the region, foreign policy towards Eritrea and everybody else, well, you could say that uh, Djibouti and Kenya did not have a foreign policy that was independent from what Meles or the TPLF wanted. And Mesfin Sium, for all the, how many years? How many years was Mesfin Sium the Minister for Foreign Affairs for Ethiopia? Almost. More you than... tell me. And he comes from a community of less than, you know, four point something or three point something million out of a country of 110 million. 
and, and there were always certain areas that were the exclusive reserve of the of TPLF, whether it's the generals. Out of 100 and something generals in the Ethiopian Armed Forces, uh, over 80% were from Tigray. I mean, how preposterous and, and ashamed can people be in such a manner? And then you have a small guys like uh, uh, Gebre, who was just a colonel, running Somalia like he's the head of state. And he ran Nairobi, literally, literally. I can tell you this without any fear of contradiction. They also ran a lot of our policies in here. So they would terrorize the whole region. Uh, and and uh, that's why I'm saying this has nothing to do with Amara. People want to say that it's Amara region against Tigray region. No. I know what happened, what the, what the TPLF did to Amara region. They took their land, massive land, which was incorporated into, into Tigray region. Dispossessed, what do you call those people? And even the ones who lived in there who are Amaras were like second class citizens in that region. So, I mean, all those things, all those atrocities and all those uh, injustices were, 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 were visited upon the Amara. There's no doubt about that. But the issue today is not Amara versus, versus Tigray. The issue is not uh, Abi versus Tigray. And the issue is not Abi, it's TPLF and its policies for the last three decades, almost close to three decades. And everybody in the region, everybody in the region is only breathing a bit of a fresh air today. Okay, sir. How do you think these policies of, uh, of holding the East Africa hostage has affected the Western's understanding of this conflict? Well, the TPLF, the TPLF had perfected lobbying in the West. They perfected, they spent the resources, they sent their people, they worked all these times to make sure that they have the West on their side. And they did that very well. All the human rights violations, all those across-border activities they used to do, all those uh, massacres they used to carry out, the West was always standing by them. Because the West was also using them to do the dirty job for it in Somalia, in Sudan, in all the countries in the neighboring, in Eritrea, all of those countries. So the, the, the West was looking at its own interests. It was looking at its own, uh, you know, basically policies. Uh, the, 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 uh, and, and the policies of the West is always hegemony and domination and uh, 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 what you call uh, exploitation of the resources and natural resources of all those countries. And in some cases, to also stop from natural, those natural resources from being exploited so that the poverty uh, levels can always increase and they, we can always be there to ask, to ask them for grants. You have to understand that Ethiopia was the biggest recipient of American aid and Western aid. Over $3 billion every year used to flow into the coffers of the TPLF. And nobody used to hold them accountable for anything. So the whole region had been scourged. The whole region had been scorched. So this is the moment now for the region to come back and, and, and reclaim its own potential. Have an economic, what do you call cooperation and integration between all those countries, Ethiopia, uh, 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 Eritrea, Somalia, maybe South Sudan, Sudan, Djibouti, all those countries. So the, 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 the prospect for the region to become, from becoming the most difficult, the most deadly region in the continent, to becoming the most powerful and the, the richest uh, region in the continent. The prospects are massive. The prospects are high. The moment you get rid of TPLF and its own awful, primitive, backward policies in which they were only taking care of themselves and they held the whole country of 110 million, 120 million people hostage, you get them off, the, off, off now, this country, the sky is the limit not only for Ethiopia, but for also the countries in the region. We will not be losing our boys and girls in, uh, across the Mediterranean and everywhere else because uh, there will be more potential. There's going to be more jobs. Like we can exploit the gas, the oil, the, the, all the natural resources that are there in Ethiopia and in Somalia and in Djibouti and in Eritrea. Uh, the, the coastline, the biggest coastline, the blue economy. I mean, I, the, without TPLF, the sky is the limit for, this, for these countries. But TPLF had to purposely, purposely and deliberately maintain the poverty in that place so that they can keep on playing the games they played on them. So I, I don't trust the West. I don't trust uh, the bulk of the Arab countries, also the so-called Gulf countries who used to assist the uh, uh, Meles and assist the uh, uh, TPLF. Uh, right now, some of them are going to see the light. I do see uh, Emirates is behaving differently lately, which I think, in my opinion, is 
is in their best interest and in the best interest of the Gulf also because the peace of the Horn of Africa will affect the Gulf. It will affect the Gulf of Eden. It will affect the Babel Mendip. It will also affect the Gulf states across the Red Sea. So I think uh, the potential for, for that wider peace is, is massive in my opinion. And for countries like my country, I keep telling them, listen, you have the best manpower in, in, in uh, trained manpower in the region. You, you have to think out of the box. And I have a feeling that is going to happen. And I have no doubt in my mind, as soon as TPLF is gotten rid of, it's not going to take the, the countries in the region, that is Somalia, uh, Ethiopia, and Eritrea, and uh, to, to get rid of Al-Shabaab within the shortest possible time. So we are seeing the entire region is breathing a fresh air. Well, the, there is this perception uh, that Ethiopia is the stabilizer of the Horn of Africa, uh, mainly due to its involvement in peacekeeping missions uh, in, uh, in, in the region. And there, is also, there are also reports that Ethiopia is pulling some of its troops from Somalia. And in, only in the last 24 hours, we have, we've heard two explosions in the Mogadishu town of Somalia. How do you think this would play out in the, in the, in the region, given that uh, Al-Shabaab's power might be uh, revived due to uh, some of the uh, troops of Ethiopia being pulled out of the country? How do you think, how do you think that will happen? given uh, Somalia's fragile na uh, nature and uh, the, the let, me, let, me, let, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, I firmly believe that the TPLF and Al-Shabaab have been working together all these years in Somalia and in the region too. And, and there is sufficient evidence to suggest that. And I will not put it, I will not put it out You were asking a question? No, 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 but the, 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 you said that TPLF used to work with Al-Shabaab. What, what, what do yes. we know about that? Is, is there any evidence that they work together? Uh, my, friend, my, my friend, I have talked to officers. I have talked to officers in the Somali army. Officers in the Somali army who told me that the Ethiopian army used to bury, used to bury arms and, and, and bullets and, and mortars and all those uh, explosives and the rest of it, all those explosives, everything that Al-Shabaab is getting in that place, ask yourself the big question, where are they getting it from? Al-Shabaab has no access to the sea. Al-Shabaab is, 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 the, is the countries in the neighborhood are Kenya and Ethiopia and Djibouti. And all those countries I do not support technically, technically, according to the information we are meant to believe, do not support Al-Shabaab. Where is Al-Shabaab getting all these arms from? Let me tell you one thing. Al-Shabaab and TPLF have been working together. I have been told authoritatively by a, a very senior Somali officer one time that he himself saw it. How it was easy to get some of those things from the Ethiopian military bases those days, those early days. I don't think this has happened now for a while because a lot of the command structure has changed. So Al-Shabaab, the, the very reason, the validation of Ethiopian presence, Ethiopian armed forces presence in Somalia was ostensibly to fight Al-Shabaab, but they were not fighting Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab is a maximum of 3,500 boys who do not have, what do you call, any of these uh, uh, mortars and mechanized units and the rest of them who can be finished and completely destroyed in the shortest possible time. But I might not be able to discuss some of these things right now here, but it's possible for me to give you a lot of those insights into what kind of things are happening in there. And, 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 and nobody wants to shabab out. Ethiopia being the first in that, in that, in that, word, or that thing. I don't think the West also wanted to shabab out of Somalia. I don't think my own country, Kenya, wants wanted Al-Shabaab out of Somalia. You see, I don't think my own country wanted Al-Shabaab out of Somalia. I don't think the countries in the region who have ostensibly sent peacekeeping forces into that country, all of them, so-called armies of African, seriously wanted to stabilize Somalia. No. It is a milking cow for your information. It's a milking cow. So, so they, they don't want to get rid of it. The West is looking at it because of the massive, massive incalculable mineral resources in that country whether it is offshore or onshore. And, and they don't want to exploit this at, at this time. They want those things to, hand, to, to, to land in their own hands. And, and, and we can understand it. We can understand it. 
So don't be cheated. Not Ethiopia, not Meles, not TPLF ever wanted to get Somalia going and, and peaceful. No. Because that was the basis for them to keep on entrenching themselves into Somalia, keep on destabilizing it, keep on di dividing it and putting it into small different states so that it does not become viable. All this land, 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 you see, Puntland, Somaliland, Jubaland, that nonsense was created by Meles and his people, by TPLF. The 4.5 was created by them. So, so it's common knowledge. Everybody knows it. It's an open secret. Mr. Speaker, what do you think would be the prospect of African, uh, East African integration uh, possibly uh, after uh, supposed uh, uh, post TPLF era in the East Africa? It's going, to be, it's going to be one of the most powerful blocks, let me tell you. I don't want even to say it's going to be the most powerful economic block in Africa. No, it's going to be one of the most powerful economic blocks in the whole world. Let me tell you one thing. Just watch it. Watch it. Watch that 120 million Ethiopians. Watch that powerful, what do you call, uh, the, the pathological and you could even say genetic disposition of Somalis in terms of trade and business and the rest of it. Watch that the knowledge that the Kenyan, uh, um, uh, Kenyan what do you call, uh, workforce has right now. We bring all that together. And Eritrea, for your information, with all these strategic locations, with the fact that these are also some of the most resilient, hardworking people in the world. I think we will have a country, we will have a region that is going to be like the European Union, a very rich, rich region that doesn't have to fight itself, that has got to develop. And, and we will develop and compete with the rest of the world. There's no question about it. That whole of Africa, whatever you want to call it, Afro-Asiatic, all of Africa, whatever you want to call it, is going to, once you stop, uh, get TPL off, off, off the map in that place, even, even between Sudan and South Sudan, there'll be no problem. Even the problem within South Sudan is going to be resolved. And we all know what, how much effort Abiy has put, Dr. Abiy has put into that. I don't think they used to do that before. The whole idea was to keep the conflict going. Because that was what they, that is the tools of trade for them. Former Deputy Speaker of uh, Kenyan Parliament, Mr. Farah Malim, it was great having you here on Prime Media. Thank you, sir. This is the end of the program and uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you.